Well, Kamala Harris, unburdened by what has been, is now burdening people's dating lives. The Harris campaign has resorted to telling black men that women won't date them if they vote for Trump. Hello, ladies. I'm Trey. It's good to be here. Hey, Trey. Hey, hey. So, what do you do and how much do you make? I work in finance, making six figures. Ooh. How tall are you? Six five. Okay. Do you work out? I like to stay active, yeah. Do you have a plan to vote? Uh, I didn't plan on it. Uh, no words. I, I don't even know what to say. Joining us now is Based Politics co-founder, journalist and commentator Brad Palumbo. Brad, good grief. Don't get popped. That's the slogan. I mean, has this reached a whole new level of tragic? Yeah, it's actually remarkable that they're even doing so much targeting black male voters in the first place with the Kamala Harris campaign, because in the context of U.S. politics, Democrats normally have the black male vote on lock, but they clearly feel very worried that they're pushing this kind of cringeworthy messaging. They've got Obama out here lecturing men, that black men, that they're just sexist if they don't vote for Kamala. And Hilariously, Kamala just last week released a agenda for black men that included cryptocurrency and weed. And I don't think she really <laughs> realized how that came across. So they're completely out of touch. The pandering is hitting another level, but I think it's really indicative that Trump is doing well with black voters or they're seeing something in their internal polls that they're even making this desperate pitch in the first place because this isn't something Democrats have normally even had to try with. They, they've just taken it for granted for years, but they might not be able to anymore. Well, speaking of desperate pitches, the Harris campaign keeps trying to enlist celebrities, the latest of whom is pop star Lizzo, who spent the weekend campaigning for the Harris uh, organisation in Detroit. Now, Lizzo helpfully produced this video of herself boarding her private jet on her way to save democracy. Have a look. I don't know about you, Brad. I'm convinced to vote Democrat after watching that. Who's she calling hoes? And she's on a private plane. Aren't the Democrats always warning us about emissions? We're all hoes, apparently, according to Lizzo. <laughs> but what makes this so funny to me is not only are they zipping around in their private jets to the climate warriors once again, but Lizzo is currently being sued for both sexual harassment and, hilariously enough, fat shaming from her employees. And of course, the Democratic Party is the party of Me Too that's supposed to believe accusers and believe women and just throw people away as soon as they're accused of anything. But suddenly, when it's a pro-Kamala celebrity, there's a very different approach. Interesting how that works, isn't it? And it's uh, it's funny on another level because Lizzo uh, took the <laughs> Trump's kind of ominous warning that if Kamala wins, the entire country of America will become like the city of Detroit, Michigan. And Lizzo on the campaign trail said, yeah, we're going to become like, uh, the whole country is going to become like Detroit. Yeah, Detroit. And I'm like, that's the message you want to go with? One of the most dangerous and depressing cities in the entire country is the fate of America under Kamala? With circuits like this, I mean, who needs opposition research? <laughs> no, <laughs> literally, you don't even need it. It's just so embarrassing. Now, look, Joe Biden, we haven't really spoken about Joe Biden in a while, have we? But look, he's, uh, he's in Berlin to meet with European allies. But the real question is... Does he even know where he is? Have a look. Yeah, you can see that exact moment, Brad, where he knows he's stood in the right position and can pose right on cue. But why do they keep sending him on these overseas missions? Well, I think that they realize that most people have stopped paying attention now that Kamala is the nominee, but I'm still incredibly disturbed by this, that we have this, this guy who's clearly not with it, uh, just in charge of the nuclear button. I mean, this is the guy who could be called in the Situation Room at any moment to defend the, the fate of not just the United States of America, but of all humankind, and he's looking lost and confused and like he 
may have just went in his diaper. I, I It's terrible. In one sense, I don't want to be mean to the guy because it's like beating up on, on a puppy, right? He's, he's just so not with it. It's not a fair fight. But on another level, I mean, this is sad. This guy is supposed to be running our country. Really? It's concerning because who is in charge? Because it's clearly not the guy we just saw in that video. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Brad, on a personal note, you received a visit at your home from one of the LGBTQ Democrat groups over the weekend. They knocked on your door and asked if you supported gay rights. Just tell us how that went. Yeah, so I'm here in Michigan, which is a swing state in the U.S., so we get all these campaigners and activists and somebody from the LGBTQ Democrats, one of those anti-hate partisan groups, came up and knocked on my door and they said their opening question was a bit odd. It was, do you support the LGBTQ? And I didn't really know how to answer this because I am gay. I support gay marriage, but uh, no, I don't support kids getting sex changes or biological males in women's sports. So I looked at this woman and I just said, no, which I don't think she was really <laughs> expecting. But then she goes, okay, but what about this other male who I see lives at your address? Does he support the LGBTQ? And I said, no, that's my boyfriend and he doesn't support any of that, all, any of all that either. And I don't think she was expecting that one because she was kind of stunned uh, as I walked away and went back inside. That's the first time she realised you can be gay and conservative. That's not mutually exclusive, Brad. Yeah. I know. It's a shock to some people that your identity does not have to determine your politics or your entire worldview. But hilariously enough, those people have the audacity to call themselves progressive and liberal when I think they're actually remarkably close-minded. <laughs> Indeed. Brad Palumbo, it's always great talking to you. Thanks for making sense Thanks, guys. of America for us.